Hello and welcome to Cards by Kate Fletcher. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make this. This is a card storage solution. As you can see it's got lots of little sections inside. The one I'm going to be making today is going to be for Christmas cards. So just a heads up, there will be some Christmas papers featured. Um, but this one, I haven't decided what I'm going to use it for yet. I'm either going to do it as Happy Mail and then fill the insides with treats. Or, I don't know, maybe sticker books or embellishments. haven't decided yet. Now, this isn't my idea at all. I was recently clearing out some of my magazines and I came across an old copy of Papercraft Inspirations and inside was a step-by-step -step guide on how to make these. So this was my prototype one following the instructions in the magazine. I have to say, wasn't always 100% clear what I was supposed to be doing. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along with me fine because I'm going to try and make it really easy. Um, but I am going to change a few things up for the one I'm making today. Um, and I'm going to do things a little bit different to what they said in the magazine. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, if you've been with me a while, you probably don't even need to be asked what collection I'm going to be using to make my Christmas card folio because obviously it's going to be Christmas Village. I love this. So because this is going to be for me, I definitely wanted to use Christmas Village that way. And even when in the unthinkable future, when I've used it all up, I will still have some. Now, all the um, measurements that I'm going to give are in centimetres, because whenever people do things in magazines, it's always in centimetres. But I did figure that um, most of these kind of craft boards... They have imperial and metric, like both sides. The Hunky Dory scoreboard, if you've got that, obviously that has centimetres one side and inches the other. And most of the paper trimmers have both as well. So I figured, although I'm giving out measurements in centimetres for a change, I didn't think it was going to be that much of an issue. So with that in mind, let's bring in my adorable scoreable. Honestly, this is definitely one of the best investments I have ever made. Um, I will put all the measurements on my blog, even though they're not my own. Um, but that's just so you don't have to sit here with a pen and paper writing everything down. Um, I'll link it in the description box of the video. And then all you have to do is click on the link and it will take you straight to the blog post. Nice and easy. Um, this does use a fair bit of card. The one that I made for my prototype, I used a lightweight cardstock as they advised to in the magazine. Um, but I wasn't happy with the results, so I'm actually going to use a heavier weight cardstock today. You are going to need two pieces of cardstock, which is 25 centimetres in length and 20 centimetres in um, width. So we have those two. You need two pieces which measure 22 and a half by 19 and a half. Your DSP, you need five pieces that measure 25 centimetres by 19 and a half centimetres. You need two pieces of 12 by 12. You need a piece which is 25 centimetres by 12 centimetres. And a piece which is 
25 centimeters by 10 centimeters i've also got a piece here which is 25 centimeters by about two centimeters that is actually off a piece of scrap card and i think some of these came off the scraps as well so definitely don't throw your scraps out until you have done all your cutting because you may be able to get extra bits for this off of the scrap pieces I am working today with the little cardstock because I just like the weight of it um, it's a really good GSM and I really like it for these kinds of projects so that's what I'm using the prototype one I used cardstock from the range I think it's the craft is it craft work or something um, but I'm, I'm gonna try it with the heavier weight and see if I'm happy so we are going to take the piece of card that is 22 and a half by 19 and a half i've already done one of these so um this is the second one and on the scoreboard you're just going to mark at one and a half centimeters all the way along i may speed the video up in some places just Once you have scored that all along, you're now going to concertina fold. So you need to do that process with both of those bits of cardstock and then put these to one side. Next we're going to bring in the piece of cardstock which measures 25 centimetres by 12 centimetres and we are going to score it at five and a half centimetres and nine and a half centimetres and this is going to become the lid to our box. So I'm just going to also fold those over now so I know where I'm at. So that's going to be the, the lid. Next, I'm going to bring in the piece which measures 25 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And this one we are going to score at three centimeters and seven centimeters. This becomes the base of the um, storage unit okay so that's um, that bit done the next thing to do I'm going to do off camera but you want to get your five pieces of DSP and you want to get either a circle punch or a die whatever works for you and we're going to cut through them all in the middle at the top there and these will then become our dividers so i'm going to go and grab a die cut a partial circle in the top and i'll be back those are all cut out and i have also saved the um bits of circle that came off because i figured you can always use these for something else or if you wanted to put tags or something to mark what's in each section um you could easily use these to do so so i'm just going to put mine to one side for now um, next up we're going to attach these to the concertina part of our um, storage case um, i am going to be using some red tape to do this And I am literally going to go on one, two, three, four, five. So I'm leaving the front one. I'm leaving the back one and a half, I would say. And I'm just going to go across these ones. Um, all I'm going to do is run some tape.
just down kind of near where the fold line is. And I don't know about you, but I definitely find by holding the tape on my fingers, I have more control, which is always good. So that's what I'm going to do across all of these and also all of these. And then I will slow the video back down and be back to you. Once you have finished adhering the red tape to both of the concertina folds, it's time to attach our DSP. Make sure you have your DSP in the order you want it running in through your storage facility. And then all you're going to do is start from the back is probably easiest. Take off the red tape on one side. I found it easier to fold it back like this and then line it up top and bottom for securing it. It's up to you how you do this. You can either finish one side completely before moving on to the other side. I'm actually going to do them in tandem. So I'll take this piece of red tape off here. Turn this sideways. And put mine on there right so so speed the video up and i will come back when i am done don't worry if it bows that's absolutely normal This is how this will now look and you can now just really quickly reinforce those fold lines both sides and we'll put this to one side for now. The next step is to cover the front and the back with DSP. So these are the pieces that measured. 25 centimeters by 20. Let's just leave it flipped over here. So we'll bring in our DSP again. Now, how I did this was really simple. I got one piece, put it in the middle of a piece of 12 by 12 paper, made sure it was central. And then all I did was fold the DSP around it and make sure I've got really nice crisp lines and I do the top the same 
fold that down. Do the sides exactly the same. And the last side. Okay, and then that will cover the front or the back, whichever you want, really nicely. The next step is to grab a pair of scissors and we're just going to trim off some of this card because we don't need it all. So on the thinnest bit in the corner, we're just going to take that off all four sides and then I'm just going to notch um, each side of where it came from so now I'll be able to nicely Cover this so I'm going to stick this down now when I did this on my prototype I used tape just wondering I think that's what I'm going to do again actually so this doesn't need to be super strong so this is just tape from the works I'm just going to run it down each of these Okay, that's the first one done. I'm just going to do the second exactly the same way. Right, that is the back and the front of the storage unit now done. And before I go any further, I'm just going to reinforce the lid slightly. So on my prototype, the lid felt really flimsy. Um, I have used the thicker card this time, which hopefully will help. But I'm just going to add to this thin lip here. So when it's on the box, this is the piece that's going to open and close. So that really thin strip I'm going to attach here just to try and reinforce this a little bit but I'm also going to use my Kalal glue because this stuff is like cement and it really um, helps to reinforce things I find. So I'm just going to put some on the back. I need to get some more of this. This is the best stuff. Definitely glad I tried this. Massive thanks to Laura for sending it to me in Happy Mail so I could try it. I am hooked. And if I need something to be strong, I do tend to grab my Kalau out. I'm just going to lay that just down there. Just 
mop up that bit of glue that's escaping. I don't want it going on the hinge part. You have got a little bit of wiggle room with Kalel as well, which is great. So if it wasn't quite straight or you weren't quite happy, you can move it. This is all going to be hidden anyway, so I don't need to worry too much. But I'm just going to leave that to dry now. While that is drying, I'm going to bring my base in and attach these two to the base. Now again, when I did this the first time around, I actually used tape to secure them. Um, I'm just wondering whether to use the curl out or whether to use tape again. I'm actually thinking tape will probably be alright for this part. So, um, I'm going to use... I'm going to use this one. So I've run it across the top, but I want some more near the fold line as well. So all I'm going to do is peel this off ahead of time and go over the top of the tape. work quite well on the first box just don't go too you don't want to go over the score line just kind of butt up to it so when you're doing this next step just make sure especially if you're using directional paper that you get them the right way up so I've taken the tape off and all I'm going to do is line it up at the sides and the score line and then pop it into place. like so flip it over let's take this tape off Same again, butt it up to the score line, make sure each side is lined up. There we go, that is the beginnings of our folder. Okay, next step we need to be attaching the concertina fold inside. So now is the time to decide which side is the back and which side is the front. Um, which, when you're using beautiful papers like this, is quite hard to do. So I've literally been sat here for ages, twisting and turning it, trying to decide which one I want at the front. I know it's really pathetic, but that's what I'm doing. Anyway, I've decided I'm going to have this one at the front. So let's grab our concertina fold. And we're going to use the red liner tape to hold this all in place. So obviously our patterned paper will need to run in order which is why I said make sure you know which one you want the front to be so we're going to lay the base flat 
and let's run some double sided tape up here as I said I'm using red liner tape you use whatever works for you the reason I'm using red liner tape is because I need it to be quite strong um, because this bit moves slightly I just thought stronger tape would probably be best and I'm going to run it both sides I do find this step particularly tricky not the running tape obviously but actually securing the concertina fold because it's obviously really bouncy which does not help when you're trying to accurately place something I'm sure someone will have the answer somewhere but um yeah I found it quite tricky but it's definitely worth it I'm going to use this to store all my Christmas cards in that I make Currently, I keep all my cards, no matter what occasion it's for, in a um, storage box from the range. But when you start adding Christmas cards in, it starts getting bulky and chunky. And then when you're searching through, looking for a card for a birthday, it's not always you know easy to find what you're looking for because suddenly a Christmas card's mixed in and you can't separate them and oh, it's just no so when i saw this i thought you know what i'm going to make one for my christmas cards to sit in and when i've made them i will pop them in here um just to keep them separate and yeah i just thought it was a good idea right now the tricky bit let's take this tape off I'm hanging the concertina fold from the other side off the table slightly while I do this. I'm going to leave a slight gap on this score line and I'm coming in slightly from the edge. try that and then this side gonna come in slightly and up slightly Now all we should have to do, in theory, is put red tape on here, hold it down, put red tape on here and hold it down, and then just close this lid over onto it. So I'll see if that works. For this bit, I am actually only going to try taking tape off one side at a time and see if that makes things any easier. So let's just compress that down. Let's try and hold it.
Right, a bit cake handed, but we got there. So, you can't see, but I'm actually already compressing this side down to try and take the tape off. So we have our box. Ta da! Now we need to put the lid on. To put the lid on, we are going to align the five and a half inch score line to the base of the box. Just get it the right way round. Um, so it's going to go on there and then close like so. I think to put this on I'm going to use Kalal because it's going to give me some wiggle room and it's also going to help strengthen the box and the lid. So just make sure whatever you're using you put it on the inside of the lid because you're going to stick this straight onto the base. There is the five and a half inch score line. So just line it up with the top of the box. There's a little bit of a border each side, but that's fine. Make sure it closes, which it does. So now I'm just going to hold this in place while that sets. Happy with that. So we'll just let that dry. Next thing I'm going to do is decorate the lid because I don't want it left red. Um, I kept the offcuts from when I was making the inserts and I have these so I'm going to use the lights because they're super pretty and they're really sparkly and I love them. We could also do the underneath of the box but I don't know you don't really see it because it's obviously standing on that piece but it's just a nice to do. Uh, I'm just going to grab a ruler and we'll measure these out. Uh, this is already the right length, so I just need to work out the width that I want. It's about five and a half centimetres. Just bring the trimmer in really quickly. That's going to be fine. Now for the top of the box, it's about four centimetres. So we're going to cut the top one, but I just want to make sure that the patterns are going to match up. So we just make sure we're actually cutting the right piece of card. Okay, so that will mean it matches up. That will be the bottom. Then we're going to cut this one here at four centimetres. Okay. And then for around the front of the box, this is all that's left, but that's going to be too small. The other off cut, and that will have to go across the front. The front measures it's about two and a half centimetres. But this bit is far too long, so we also need to do the length, which is 25 centimetres. And 
and that will now fit on there fine. Bring the pieces back in. Now again, I'm going to reinforce the box lid by using Kalau to glue these on. So I'm going to do that really quick and then I will come back to you. I'm just waiting for the lid to dry but already I am so much happier with how this box has turned out compared to the other one it feels sturdier um, it's sitting nicer so I'm really happy with this one the last thing to do is to add a closure to the lid because obviously at the moment it's just going to keep popping up so I'm going to use these hook and loop um, button dabs got these from craft label I'm going to use two and their self adhesive as well which is handy just get those off of the release paper they are so sticky they literally take the paper off with them but that will peel right off as you can see now I like mine to have the um, soft velcro as it were towards me so that's the bit that comes off and the hooky bit will be on the top of the lid so let's roughly position it where I want it to go and the same this side Honestly, these are so sticky, my fingers are sticking to them. Roughly in the same position this side, and then all I have to do is close the lid, press. Already, this feels a lot sturdier than the last lid did. The last one just felt a little bit flimsy because I've run the card along the back of the flip and because I've used Kalau it does feel nice and strong so much so I can literally pick it up by the flap <laughs> and that's basically it you could decorate the front up if you wanted to I think I'm going to leave mine for now you could also ha add a handle if you wanted to again I'm not going to do that and you could definitely decorate the back up if you wanted to I really like it as it is I like to be able to see the collection obviously and it's just really pretty That's how the inside is looking. Loads of card storage in there. And I can add tabs as well at a later date if I wanted to. So like family, friends, John's friends, yard, you know, whatever. Or I could just make them and put them in. Haven't decided yet. But I think that has come out so well. So I would definitely recommend using a stronger card stock. Don't use a weaker one. Um, definitely use well I would recommend using the red liner tape when you are adhering the movable parts and if you've got Kalau I would recommend that for the lid but you don't have to um, also I would definitely recommend just running that extra piece of card along the back it just strengthens it but I think that is super cute it stands up all on its own got loads of card space storage and I'm really pleased with it so I hope you have enjoyed seeing how I've made that I hope you'll give it a go yourself because they are really useful to have and as I say you could always shrink it down a bit and use it for friend mail and just stuff it full of goodies 
um, thank you so much for watching today if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do consider subscribing it absolutely means the world to me every time I get a new subscriber and I love getting to know you all I hope you are all well and I will be back soon with more videos so until then take care and I'll see you soon bye for now